So, my name is Tomasz Wańczyk. I'm a DevOps engineer for uh, one of the projects for US based customer uh, that is delivering services or advertisement mobile platform for different kinds of companies like Instagram or sorry, Facebook, um, uh, T Mobile, Verizon, and other providers. And uh, today I'm going to talk about some topic uh, which is titled as cost of their environments and Kubernetes using ESTO and SkinAcre. Um, I will explain you what is that, what issues I've met during the implementation phase, uh, and what benefits we have from it. So a um, few words about the requirements um, that uh, some time ago, I, I was asked about some solution to uh, enable testers and developers um, to deploy their code, uh, feature branch code um, on Kubernetes. Um, and uh, we were thinking about the solution to accomplish this kind of problem. Um, finally, we found out a good way and uh, at, at for now, as for now, uh, it works really good uh, without any issues. So yeah, I will dive into that topic um, right now. So when it comes to requirements, uh, there were a couple of uh, them. Um, one, of course, um, was to the limit of limit the scope of visibility. So basically, uh, maybe a few words about the solution itself. What is that? So um, the main goal was to just give away to developer and to tester uh, to deploy their code uh, on, on the environment without impacting the original environment. Uh, so this kind of solution uh, we are using in our dev. Um, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, this is like a fully automated solution. Uh, we do it like a one click. Uh, and uh, one of the key factors that um that i had uh, while deploying or implementing this solution was the cost uh, our customer is quite sensitive uh, when it comes to cost so um we didn't consider solution like just create the a copy of the dev environment with some replacement of one or many uh, microservices uh, it uh, should be like a very cost effective solution. And basically, it must be available uh, via a dedicated URL as a typical dev environment. So these are like a basic requirements that we, uh, we met. Um, but to have like a better understanding to, have, to, get, the, to get the context of what we were at that time, a uh, few information about our uh, development environment. So at that time, uh, we had like a 20 different microservices stored on AWS ECR. Uh, of course, the main platform um, that we are using to uh, expose or to deploy our application is AWS EKS. Um, in order to optimize or to cut the overall cost of the solution or of the environment, uh, we are using um, something which is called Spot Inst. I'm not sure you know what is that. Basically, this is an application that is deployed on Kubernetes and um, it leverages uh, AWS API in order to spin up or uh, to uh, disable uh, EC2 instances. Uh, exactly these are on spot spot kind instances besides that um at that time we were using aws ingress controller that um, provides elb as the ingress um, we are using uh, ssm parameters this is the way how developer can uh, provide or control over the, uh, or provide configuration to uh, the application. So I'm not involved into this process. Um, this is like a uh, entry point script that simply uh, 
export environment variables from SSM parameters to the Spring Boot Java application. Uh, of course, when it comes to Kubernetes, uh, we are using hand charts. This is like the code of, uh, of all of our uh, Kubernetes manifests. As a continuous delivery or deployment tool, we are using Spinnaker, which is one of the main actors in this story. Um, when it comes to CI, we are using GitLab. Um, this is the way how we build and push uh, Docker images to ECR. And when it comes to some uh, third party tools that are, uh, let's say, platform components, um, those we are deploying um, using Flux. Uh, and to one of the quite important things, uh, thing in this story is external DNS, which I will explain uh, later on. Okay, so uh, the main component that the main platform components that uh, helped us to um, to introduce or to, uh, to to set up this kind of solution is uh, service mesh. For for those who don't know what is service mesh, this is some kind of uh, infrastructure layer that uh, gives you a way to um, like combine different environments in like a one um, architecture. It's not, it can't be like uh, point out to like a one architecture. It's not only about the microservices. You can create hybrid infrastructure or architecture using EC2, EKS, and so on. Um, most often this is implemented as a proxy server that acts as a uh, that, as a like a HTTP server that acts a, like a reverse proxy between in the middle of the uh, communication between microservices or, or applications that um, that are working in your um, architecture. Uh, in Kubernetes, this is most often as a, a sidecar. Um, uh, which leverages Envoy proxy. So initially, uh, for a couple of reasons, we started from AWS AppMesh. Um, so the decision was taken due to the customer preference. Um, they have like a premium support and they are using like uh, 15 AWS accounts. So um, they are quite, quite big AWS customer. Um, also, we 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 went for this app mesh initially because of the uh, simplicity of this solution. Um, basically, the control plane of service mesh is managed by AWS, uh, and you can easily write a code to manage all of the things around by Terraform. Um, unfortunately, after a while, even if we are like leveraging the basic uh, spectrum of the features that service provides service mesh provides uh, unfortunately we met uh, or we faced a couple of different limitations that i will explain right now um, as far as i know uh, most of them are already fixed because um, at that time i were diving into that topic and there is already um, there is a roadmap on GitHub that you can see what they are doing in scope of the app mesh. You can even open a, an issue to AWS developers. Unfortunately, a few of the items that were blockers for us at that time was not fixed. Uh, so to this, I can include things like um, there was no support of, of host names and headers for virtual gateway. Uh, I will explain later on what virtual gateway is. Uh, this is not some kind of, let's say, blocker anyway. It uh, uh, forced us to change um, Kubernetes or to change configuration of our applications because uh, routing happens only for FQDN uh, instead of Kubernetes service name. Uh, so if you have like a one namespace and you just call service, but it's name, 
you can't do that in Apache. It must be FQDN, including uh, namespace. Um, besides that, uh, we were not able to rewrite hostname and path, and it uh, worked in a different way that you expected from it. While you have well, when you have experience with like Nginx ingress, uh, community one, and finally. Uh, Host header is modified, our request goes through services. Uh, it means that uh, on, on the upstream level, like on the final uh, microservice, you are not able to see uh, the host or the endpoint of the applications that, uh, that was used by the uh, client. So um, after that, we decided to switch to ESTO as this is like the most advanced uh, service mesh. Um, from the perspective, from the feature perspective, it's uh, some kind of uh, standard and it had impact on how service mesh looks like now. And the good thing about that is that this is part of a service mesh interface project that uh, standardized this area. It means if you know how like Istio works, what kind of objects uh, you can use and how they interact with each other, then you most likely can easily switch to a different solution like uh, linked or, or any other that are um, that you can get from this site. Uh, basically describing all of the features uh, is out of the scope of this presentation. Um, when it comes to this solution, we are interested in traffic splitting, uh, especially in three kinds of uh, objects, uh, which are virtual service, ingress virtual service, and routing rules. So the first one, virtual service, is uh, like abstraction of the Kubernetes service. If you know what is that, uh, basically it is exactly the same but it gives you uh, a lot more features which uh, we are going to use uh, later on um, when it comes to when it comes to ingress um, and the way how you expose application to the end user uh, esto have has uh, built in ingress it's really easy to set up and uh, the thing that you need to know uh, when it comes to this story is that um, basically you manipulate over the, uh, let's say, north-south traffic. This is the traffic that comes to mesh uh, using dedicated virtual service. So nothing is different here. Uh, from the ingress perspective, you just use dedicated virtual service. And as part of this story, we use a lot Mm, routing rules, but yeah, I will explain it in next slides. Um, so high level description on what uh, we did in order to satisfy um, already mentioned requirements. So the basic thing is that uh, we just push um, the code or the feature, feature branch code uh, to ECR. Um, so we are using Kaniko as a tool that uh, is building our Docker images. And this, the same tool also is pushing these uh, images to ECR. Uh, when it comes to the name, the strategy naming, we are using like a tag with uh, feature branch name dash pipeline ID. So uh, the last job in our like feature branch pipeline just pushes uh, Docker to ECR. This is one thing that uh, is required, but one of the things that is required by our, but, uh, by our solution. Uh, the next thing is that uh, we have like a dedicated Spinnaker pipeline in each uh, Spinnaker application. When I'm saying about Spinnaker application, uh, I mean like a typical microservice or different application in our um product and yeah if the developer of uh tester um wants to deploy this one particular microservice then then 
it just is it's all about one pipeline or one click in in spinnaker so yeah i will dive into that later on as well few things or when it comes to um routing uh now i would like to point you out to places which uh from the perspective of the whole story or of the solution uh do the thing so the first point is that uh in order to manage this traffic we need to change routing of particular microservice it is often called east-west traffic or service to service uh and it happens when we route traffic to feature branch microservice. Um, and the, the most important pa part in this is the uh, request that contains a particular header. Uh, I will explain later on how this header uh, is created and how what is what it contains and basically how we um, define those kind of roles. Uh, there is also another point in this uh, manipulation. This is uh, the traffic that comes from the browser. So the first one is about the connection between microservices in mesh, uh, service to service. And also you need to consider in this kind of solution, the traffic that comes from the browser from front end application. So this is the thing, the second thing. Um, on the right side of my screen, you see an example of uh, microservices virtual service with some uh, rule. Um, as I said, I will explain later on uh, what is this origin trace and what is regex uh, and how we uh, configure all the things related. A uh, few words about the pipeline itself. This is more on the user perspective. So uh, as I already mentioned, there is like a pipeline in Spinnaker that requires one click in order to deploy this feature branch code. Um, but there are like a two inputs required by this uh, pipeline. So the first is obvious, it's just the tag. So as I said, we have already uh, Docker image in ECR. And here, developer or, or, or tester just need to select a proper tag that consists um, the code. And also, there is a question about environment name. So environment name is, is like variable that defines the scope of this feature branch deployment. It means that uh you can create like a three four or even more uh feature um branch code you can deploy like more one or more um microservices from the feature branch but if you have like a, the same environment name it will be the same scope it means that uh all requests that will come through the same endpoint, which I will explain later on how uh, how it's uh, how it's created. Then you still have like one uh, one uh, na namespace or one area of or your environment. Uh, so you are able to test not only like one feature branch, but you can test feature branch from different kind of microservices. That some at the same time. So what was the challenge? Um, there are a couple of ways to accomplish that. Uh, the most complicated way is uh, to execute kube control patch uh, against current Kubernetes object, but uh, this is really hard. I'm not sure you have ever tried that, but uh, it means that you need to deal with some uh, lists. So, for instance, if you have like a 10 elements in list, uh, by saying list, I mean list in Kubernetes object, then if you want to change one, you first need to find the index of the item in this list, and then you can apply the patch against this item. 
<laughs> that's really hard. Uh, and I would say it's really, uh, really a huge overhead. So um, it, this kind of um, solution you need to have because you, this solution should, is like a, a stateful solution that requires from you the knowledge about other execution. So for instance, you can uh, run one pipeline in uh, one application and that's, uh, at the same time you can run the second pipeline with different environment or the same environment. So somewhere you need to know uh, the state of the configuration. So either you would change like the uh, runtime, so the configuration that is stored on Kubernetes in etcd by applying the patch. So as I already mentioned, that's really hard or you can have like a database when you store all of the information about um, about feature amps. So I came up with solution that we store the state uh, of the routing in a very simple DynamoDB table uh, that obviously is updated by the pipeline, feature and deployment pipeline. And uh, of course, there are a couple of ways to use this DynamoDB data. Uh, and generate Kubernetes manifest desired state. So uh, the first one uh, is just write some script that uh, potentially would translate DynamoDB data into hand chart input. Anyway, I'm not sure uh, because I just wanted to try something new. So I went for a generic solution and I wrote some code in Golang. I will explain later on how this 300 lines code looks like. Uh, and most likely there are other ways, but I don't know. Maybe you have some ideas. We can talk about that later on. Uh, so the things that I will um, explain right now are like the crucial from the solution perspective because there are two points where you need to involve uh, developers. So the first thing is that you need to somehow uh, include the, um, the header in, uh, in the front end. I understand that you can uh, just try to leverage the host header, but um, I remember that at time when we were, we were working on that, we face an issue with this host header because it's not like recommended to manipulate over this header. So that's why we we came up with a we came up with own header. It's called origin trace. So basically, what front end application does, it just takes this uh, host header value and put it in origin trace header. It means that each request that comes from front end uh, contain origin trace header with uh, like endpoint of the application, like the main of the app or whatever. And the second uh, second important thing uh, is that you need to consider a scenario where one microservice talk to another one, and let's say another one to talk to different one. So we need to ensure that cascading request contains uh, information uh, about this origin trace header. So this is the work that uh, uh, that our developers did in order to like support this solution. This origin trace header introduced by us must be supported in applications to like um, uh, transfer this information over the cascading uh, requests. So as I already mentioned, uh, I decided to write some uh, Golang tool. This is like nothing complicated. I would say I'm not a Golang developer, but most likely you can do the same in Python and any other language. The thing is that I just leverage AWS SDK2 uh, to get data from DynamoDB. Um, and I also use like a super basic library of Golang template. Um, this is of course, part of the Docker image that supports uh, two modes like enable or clean up. Um, so this Docker image is uh, executed by Kubernetes job. Um, so the main two actions that 
this tool uh, does is just to enable feature end or to delete feature end. So as part of the um, first action, uh, we just add information to DynamoDB table. Hey, microservice um, A just needs that just is going to be deployed with uh, feature uh, B and, and so on. And uh, then we just generate Kubernetes manifest. Mm, I will explain exactly what kind of manifest uh we uh, are generating and finally when this is done we just apply those on kubernetes similar action is taken when it comes to um deletion um yeah and there is like a dedicated pipeline uh, i will also cover this topic later on dedicated scheduled pipeline in spinnaker that just execute this code First thing is to just delete all records from DynamoDB table, or maybe the first one is to just uh, remove all of the uh, Kubernetes components from uh, that that um, have cooler label. Then uh, this tool just deletes all of the records from DynamoDB table, generate manifest. This is like a default configuration, no routings, and apply the manifest. So here is a short uh, few lines of the code. Uh, on the left side, there is a entry point script that simply shows you what kind of parameters are passed to this Docker uh, container. So even if this is uh, uh, creating or if this is removing, this is all about one Golang tool. And uh, as you can see on the last line, it is just about cube control applied. Um, and yeah, and this kind of action is triggered by the Kubernetes job and it is triggered by Spinnaker pipeline. The uh, code Kubernetes job is on the right side and I highlighted service account name. This is feature branch because we are using widely ERCA. This is IAM role for service accounts in EKS. Basically, uh, it maps like a Kubernetes service account called feature branch with some AWS role. This role simply is granted to get data from get and delete data from uh, DynamoDB table. So as I already mentioned something about Go like Golang templates, these are strictly related to ESTU manifests. So the first one, this is gateway. So if we are, uh, ingress controller, right? And thanks to this gateway, this is, uh, as you see, ESTO uh, object, thanks to gateway, uh, you can like create new name for your environment. And what's important here is that, um, we are using external DNS as a tool that manages our root 53 domains. So basically I don't care when I need to create DNS record for this uh, environment or when I need to remove it because this is all handled by this external DNS. Uh, I'm not sure, but most likely as default, this is not integrated with the uh, uh, ESTO. It works like natively with, um, Kubernetes services and uh, typical ingress object, but there is like a one parameter that gives you a way to just enable it with ESTO as well. So no, no issue with that. Um, thanks to that, you can just expose or you can just create DNS record as already mentioned. The second one um, is of course virtual service. And this one is strictly related to microservice. Uh, it means that uh, there is some kind of iteration happening in there um, of all of the features for this one particular service. So if there is a feature for campaign application, we um, create a virtual service campaign and defines routing as part of it. Um, there are two interesting points in here. The first one is header. So I've already explained 
uh, why this is origin trace. This is like a generic header that we introduce in our applications, front end and back end. Um, and header regex is simply some kind of regex that uh, satisfy the URL uh, from like gateway object. So we often like deliver endpoint for our application, which is like a typical name genesis something dash and feature end. So at the end, when uh, all is done, uh, user can access this environment by URL genesis dash something. And uh, this is, as I said, totally isolated from the typical dev environment. Even if this is a pod deployed exactly in the same namespace, it's almost uh, configured in exactly the same way. Of course, we are using a bit different levels of resources, especially from, uh, especially uh, when it comes to memory and CPU, just to decrease the overall cost. As uh, customer is very sen very sensitive on that. Anyway, uh, it's almost the same as typical pod deployed in dev. And the last object that we are rendering is a gateway virtual service. I, I mentioned a few minutes ago uh, that in this kind of setup, there is nothing like ingress object. You have like a dedicated virtual service, which you uh, assign with uh, the gateway. And this is visible on, uh, on the screen that gateway is used from like the previous um, object and uh, yeah, we are iterating over all of the items in our uh, array. One thing more that I should add here is that UI as default routing is the last item on the list. That was, that's why this conditional statement. When it comes to this tool, uh, of course, you are, if you are interested in, uh, I can just ping me, I can send you this code. This is like 300 lines and uh, basic data structure are already on my screen. So the first data structure is DynamoDB item. This is exactly a way how we store data in DynamoDB. So we have like a microservice column and feature column. Then we map or we have two different structure microservice and feature which uh, stores different microservices. While uh, filling in the structure or while creating these objects I just um, define the header regex and header basically using some uh, functions and it is almost always the same so header strictly relates to the feature uh, sorry header is always like origin trace and header regex strictly relates strictly uh, relates to the feature name uh, and here we have like uh, one example of the function that uh, renders this template. Uh, nothing special here. If you are interested in Go, this is like a basic uh, way of uh, rendering Golang template. Basically, the template language is the same as you know from Helm. Nothing new here. So I would say even this kind of code can be reused in Helm. But this is only uh first idea i'm not sure like 100 percent um yeah and the last thing of this the last thing of this solution is this automatic cleanup so uh we agreed with our team that uh for us it's really fine that we just remove all of the feature ends at the end of the day uh thanks to this spotting uh solution uh, our cluster just scales down uh, when uh, pods uh, uh, are terminated. Uh, action is executed on schedule in Spinnaker, so as I said, in the evening. Uh, and as part of this action, this Golang tool just iterates over feature ends in DynamoDB uh, and remove all of the Kubernetes objects related, like deployment, service, virtual service, gateway. Uh, so it uh, selects them by feature and label. Then uh, it removes all of the items in DynamoDB and finally generate manifest files and update them on the cluster. It's just like a default configuration without any routings, just, just basic uh, 
Kubernetes manifest. And I think that's it. Uh, maybe you have some question or ideas, or maybe you have already done something like that with some different approach 